All right, welcome guys to another episode of the Up and Up podcast. My name is Blessing K. My name is Lam. Welcome to the Up and Up podcast. And today we're going to be talking about turning passion into purpose. So to begin with, we're going to be doing a couple would you rather just kind of break the ice, um, try and make you laugh. All right, how about this one? You'd like this one. Uh, would you rather wake up with wrinkles that straighten out throughout the day or wake up with good skin that gets progressively like more wrinkly as the, day's, as the day goes by? Hmm. I don't know. Cause it, like, how long does it take for them to straighten out? Because I guess you, you could deal with it if it like, you know, went away like fairly early in the morning. But yeah. If you were still wrinkly by, you know, like midday, I don't know. Like throughout the day. So it would, like take time for it to dissipate. So, like, probably we're talking four hours-ish. Mm, I don't know. I guess I'd say in the morning, because then I could just say, oh, you know, like, I'm really tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I slept funny. You know, it's... That's a hard one, man. I don't know what's actually... I know, because way, you're wrinkly at one, one side of the day, so... Yeah, no, I'd choose the first one, like, wake up with wrinkles. Mm. You know why? Because then, like, when you want to go out and you, you want to, like, and you're single and you want to go out and, like, and you get progressively worse, like, you ain't, you ain't, <laughs> you ain't going to find any. No one's going to want, no one's going to want that. Anyway. But like a Cinderella type thing, like, quick, we've got to get home before I get wrinkly. <laughs> yeah, trust. Like, okay, what, um, eat your food piping hot all the time or always served cold no matter what? Piping hot. Piping hot, yeah. I don't like cold food. Like, it's weird. Like, I always try and think to myself, you know, I'm going to try and get, like, a meal deal today. Try and get, you know, just, like, a little sandwich from the shop or something. But then I go in there and I look at it and I'm like, oh, it's just no. cold in a packet. I want something nice and hot and a nice meal. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm like you, ma'am. Okay, receive 100K today or 1 million 10 years from now. 100k a day 100k just today oh well that's it just 100k 100k yeah you receive what you see that today or 1 million in 10 years how old would i be in 10 years i'd only be like 30 i think i think i'd get a million like what was it 10 million or just a million 1 million 1 million in 10 years mm, i think i'd go for the mill in 10 years mm. now i'd go for 100k but i'm not going i'm being honest like there's so there's so many plans i'd like to like but then, yeah, execute true. now if, yeah if you had that now you could i guess get things into motion and then into motion have, have more even more money. yeah so there's that but then i'm stupid and bad with money so. <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh one last one would you rather be able to delete certain parts of your memory or be able to delete some parts of other people's memories i'd, del- I'd like to delete other people's memories <laughs> Uh, manipulative I want to I'd like to get my hands in there (laughs) (laughs) Ah, I don't know do you know what I delete my memory really yeah because then I'd just be I'd be more free I wouldn't really care about what other people would think of me because I wouldn't even know anyway so yeah I guess so ignorance is bliss you know what sometimes ignorance is bliss yeah definitely but yeah i think yeah that is it for the would you rather guys all right so uh first question discuss the importance of self-reflection to identify one's true passion Hmm. i guess that's figuring out what you really want to do what you really want to spend your time doing and what would make you happy um what you're actually passionate about I guess, like, sometimes you don't actually know. And sometimes people might not even be passionate about something. Like, there's a lot of pressure to feel like you need to have, like... A, Everything figured out. Yeah, and yeah. know exactly what you want to do and exactly how you want to get there. But, like, some people just want a job that makes them enough money to survive, be happy, do things. Just live their life. Yeah, and that's fine. Like, that's literally fine and normal. But then, I feel like with me, like, I feel like I need to have something have to something towards. yeah yeah i've always been like that too but then when i think what do i really want to be doing forever i think i don't know just chill <laughs> <laughs> uh i think how could oh i don't know how to i don't know where to start with this because 
I think when I was in like secondary school, that's something I'd always ask myself. Mm. And I think the older, you, the older you get, the more clear you are with it. If you ask yourself the right questions, like I always wanted to know, you know, what is it that I want to do? You know, what, what's my like purpose or like, you know, destiny, those massive words, right? And it's okay, like when you're, when you're at that point in your life, it's okay not to know. That's totally fine. Just as long as you try and figure that out, because you don't want to end up being, being like what, 50 with a midlife crisis and you don't know what you're doing. But then a lot of people figure out what they want to do at that age, like when they get later, older, like they get yeah. to college or university. And that's fine, yeah. Write a bestseller, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And of, an artist and, you know. Or a billionaire. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people. Out of nowhere. You know, find themselves like after 50 or, you know, when they're, when they're older. Um, yeah. It literally can happen. Anytime. It can happen at any time. You know, when I actually knew, like thought I knew what I wanted to do forever when I was younger, like I always wanted to be a famous singer. Like that's what I wanted to be. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Always, I was like always in every school talent show, always wanted to be the, the lead in the school play or yeah. stuff like that. Um, and then it's weird. Like when I got older, um, went to college, you know, did music at college and, you know, I enjoyed it then. And then when I started working here at Urban Spirit Studios, and I actually tried to record a song with somebody. Yeah. And it was like kind of difficult. Like I found it really stressful. And like there was a, when I, as soon as I got in the booth and I had to, you know, sing perfectly for this studio track, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I just want to sing for fun. Like this is taking all the fun right. out of it. Like yeah. Making, making a hobby work. More tedious. It's just making it not fun for me. Like I just want to sing. I don't want to have to like. Think sound of, perfect yeah right, that's where i was at that that was like six months ago so i don't know i feel like now i'm starting to feel like i do kind of want to get back into it i want to mm-hmm. build my confidence back up and maybe try performing again um i'd love to see that by the way yeah that'd be really cool but i'll sit at the front and embarrass you yeah <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fun yeah it really it really can take the fun out of it when you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to make something you find enjoyable, like trying to make money out of that as well, trying to make that a career. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if you find doing both manageable, I don't know, I guess you can, but sometimes a hobby can just be a hobby. Like it doesn't have to be a career. No, it doesn't have to be a career for you to enjoy it. Like if you do want to do that, that's great. But like, don't stop yourself doing something simply because it doesn't make you money. Um, The world does not actually, or let's say the human psyche does not revolve around money. Trust me. Um, I think, and if you want to do that, just understand that there's going to be a period of time where you're not, it, you're not going to make a lot of money at first. Do you know what I mean? And it's just going to be you and your passion. And I think that's what, that's where it started with me actually. Cause I think I said this in the last episode regarding me and singing like in a boys school. Right. Oh, yeah. And how, how I just, one day, like I was in, I was like, do you know, like 2009 and summer, mm-hmm. right. I was going to year 10, right? And I was at like, you know, Scotland. I was laying down one night and I had this, I know I had this strong, strong impression. Yo, blessing, you need to start singing. Because at this point, I was playing around with like rapping all the time and like doing that, right? And it was fun. I'm not going to lie. But something inside my gut and my heart said, you need to start singing. Do you know what I mean? And singing is something that I've done for like ever. Like I wouldn't shut up in school, like in sing- like singing. And I was like, you know, okay, like, let me just go ahead and do it then. And then, you know, I enjoyed it and their opportunities opened up. So yeah, that's another thing. Follow your intuition. That's a, yeah, that's it. That's it. Follow your intuition. No matter how scary it is, no matter how like random or how, you know, scared you might be or what people scared of what other people would think just go for it you just have no idea where you'll end up so uh yeah yeah i can't remember where or when but this guy said um do interesting things and interesting things will happen to you Mm. or like the other one uh do something you've never done in order to be somewhere you've never been yeah something like that it's really cool all right, explore common fears 
and doubts that people face when pursuing their dreams? Yeah, I, I have imposter syndrome, I think. Basically, I don't really know how to explain it. I think that's what it's called anyway. Like, yeah. I feel like you're not a proper person. I don't know, it doesn't feel real because I'm doing it. Like, it's just not... Or, you, you know, I'm not doing a good job. You know, mm -hmm. Let me Google it. Let me Google it. Imposter, is it the one where you feel like you're not good enough? Or Probably, like... that's definitely part of it. Consistent inability to believe that one's success is derived or has been legitimately achieved oh. as a result of one's own effort or skills. People suffering from imposter syndrome may, may be at increased risk of anxiety. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what? So, uh, so when you make it, it's like, uh, do I deserve it though? Mm. Yeah. Oh man. How was it? How has it been like for you? going through that it's just everything just feels kind of well for me it just feels it's, it just makes it like loudly scary like i just feel like <laughs> like you, you feel like as if you know people are just gonna turn on you and like say hey you don't deserve that like or you feel like you're gonna be exposed in some way yeah like i'm just I feel like a fraud like, right. <laughs> because with this whole thing, with starting Urban Spirit, um, making a podcast, all the stuff that I've been doing the past couple of years, yeah, is like totally new. I've literally just been winging it. Like, I didn't. Right. Know, I was, you know, when I finished college, I didn't do anything um, for ages, and then obviously I got that call from Rob saying, "Do you want to start this?" And I was like, "Okay." Mm -hmm. Don't know what I'm doing, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I knew I wanted to be in some kind of creative industry. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was really good that I actually got the opportunity to start this. Cause, you know, I'm really lucky, actually, that Rob came along and wanted to start this. Uh, Rob is the owner of Urban Spirit Studios. Shout out to Rob. Yeah, none of this would be here without Rob. Yeah. Or me. In fact. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this podcast wouldn't be running without her, by the way, guys. Uh, yeah, and it feels so weird when people say stuff. Like, people are always giving me praise, and I'm like... Embrace it, cause I she. By the way, guys, like she has been. She's the one that creates the scripts, no, creates the like ideas and like the setup. So like, shout out to her. Don't feel like an imposter. <laughs> I can't help it, and it's so weird. Like um, when I was talking to Sarah, uh, a lovely lady who works at Urban Spirit. Um, you know, we were talking about this podcast and I was saying, um, you know, I think, you know, it seems like it's going well. And she's yeah. like, yeah, you know, you seem like you're very knowledgeable on things and like it would be interesting about what you talk about. So <laughs> like, me, knowledgeable, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's like, I know like, what you like, mean. No, I'm not, like, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm literally just winging it, like making it up as I go along. <laughs> right, no, that's a it's, common... It's weird to hear people compliment you on things that... I feel like not. I think that's a common thing though. Like, I guess I guess it's a spectrum, but like mm. sometimes when we're very good at something or when we're really great people, when you're that person, when you're you, you don't see how great you are because mm -hmm. mostly all you see are your like flaws. And I, believe me, I understand that yeah. because you know sometimes I feel like oh, I could have done that better. I could have, you know, you you sort of you're more focused on or you know. I snapped at, you know, so-and-so today. I wish I didn't do that or, you know what I mean? And it makes you feel like, it makes you feel like you're in the doghouse. But when other people see, see parts of you, you don't pay attention to because you're so used to being that way. Yeah. And you're so used to like being a bet, wanting to be a better person. It's like you sort of lose, sort of lose sight of your strengths and the stuff that you are good at. Do you know what I mean? So... I guess there's something where a lot of us, I think a lot of us need to hear that actually. Um, setting clear goals. What is the significance of setting specific and achievable goals? So, um, to know where you're going. Yeah, to be honest, I don't even know if I have any. I just know that I wanna make Urban Spirit big. I know that I want the things that I'm currently working on to be a success and then you know when I'm happy you know the same with any project I work on I guess I just I don't think I have any long-term career goals at the minute just to do well in what I'm doing and be happy with what I'm doing mm -hmm. that's a good one um do you know when do you know in the interview have they ever do you know for a job interview have you have they ever asked you 
Where do you see yourself in five years? I don't even remember. Probably. Yeah, I've been asked that before. No, I've been asked that when, you know, when you, you know, apply on the application for when you go to jobs and like, yeah. They always ask something like that. What I like to do is, if you could click your fingers and have your life exactly how you wanted it, what would you do? Like, you know, how much money would you have in your bank? You can't say limitless. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, that's a goal. That's a goal, right? Or, you know, if money wasn't a problem and, you know, you, but you had to do something for the rest of your life, what would it be? Walk around. <laughs> walk. <laughs> just walk around. She I wants like to walk. Around. I like walking around, like you know, the countryside and just in cool little places. Oh, like, I love around, that. Take pictures, look at animals, talk to them a bit when no one's around, so I don't look weird. Um, love animals. Do you, you, you talk to animals too? Yeah, I remember in the last episode, and you said like, would you rather talk to animals or whatever? And I was like, yeah, I want to talk. To I want to. I, I said that. Do, but I would like them to talk, talk back. back. Yeah. yeah, I love. I thought I was, when I was little, I used to do that a lot as well. Talk to animals. Yeah. So, you know, I just like walking around, looking at nice stuff, chilling out. Um, you know, I, like, I love singing. Like, I just like to sing, sing. Yeah. And I do that again while I walk around. I just sing. Sing, yeah. Same, same. Oh, my God. But a couple of weeks ago, like, I was just walking around. And in the countryside, it gets dark at night. Like, mm-hmm. it's pitch black. So if there's someone literally a few feet away from away from me, like, I can't see. I talk to myself as well. So mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it's yeah. like, I walk past me while I'm talking to myself and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> you start talking. <laughs> yeah, I talk to yeah. myself all the time. But yeah, like I was, I can't remember what I was singing, but I was singing it in like a weird way, in like a weird accent. Yeah. Like I think it was like in a Southern American accent. I was singing a song. I can't remember what it was, and I'm not going to try and recreate it. But yeah, some guy like literally walked past me as I was like singing that loudly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so awkward when they're just walking past. I'm just there, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I, do you know what you should do? No, that's is what I do. I just keep singing. Mm. I know it's difficult, but like you, uh, trust me, you'll get over it. Yeah, I guess it doesn't actually matter what they're gonna do. <laughs> no, because you know, think of it. We're not all that different. Because I'm yeah. sure the person that walked past you has been in that same situation as you at some point. And to be fair, whenever I see people who are just like walking along singing, I think, oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. you see that's what I mean. Cool. Like they're. they're they, they're all free. They don't care about what other people think. And I'm thinking, they seem really cool. So. Yeah. So, embracing failure as a learning opportunity. Right? This is a good one. Because in the last episode that we filmed, I wanted to use the green screen. Now, if you, if you look at the last episode, number two, you'll see what I mean. So, I literally just thought, I want to try out the green screen today. Never done it. Never tried to use it. But... At the moment, like this year, the last year or so, I've just been thinking, I can do anything. If I put my mind to it, I can just do it. And if I fail, you know, it doesn't really matter. So I tried to do the green screen. Um, and because I didn't even watch like a YouTube video about it, I literally, <laughs> I literally set, you know, set up the table, set up the lights and camera and just started recording. Um, I now realise that you have to light the subject and the background separately. I know that now. So I've learned from my mistakes and next time we use it, I'll know what to do a bit better. Um, Cause you know, you could tell like from where the green lights reflected on our clothes, it's like, we've got like right. spotty shoulders. And I think it's, <laughs> it's taken a bit out your face sometimes when you turn to the oh, side. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it looks all right. You know, I guess if you're just like really looking at it and nitpicking it, you know, it looks amateur because it is, but you know, we're trying, we're literally just trying new things, just doing things. Um, that's totally fine, man. And that's what I've been doing this whole time, literally just winging it, trying, learning from my mistakes. Because then once you've made that mistake, you know what to do next time. You know what to do. Like, it's okay. Yeah. It's fine. But the stuff that you just said to do with a green screen, I have no idea what that is. You know what? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what, like the, like the, what's it like the setting and the green screen separately? How do you do that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> should have watched the video. <laughs> I don't know either. As soon as I get round to it, I watch a video and I know what it means, so it, it's fine. Right, it's fine. <laughs> Yo, so we jumped it. We jumped into this, and we 
we dove into the deep end, didn't we? Yeah, and I think that's like, literally what you have to do. You got to make content, make music, literally just make it, release it. It's yeah. not going to do well at first unless you've got loads of money and connections and you know loads of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're just a regular person trying to start something, just do it. It's going to feel really fake and forced. Um, and the same with starting a business. I'm helping my boyfriend set up a, a business for his carpet fitting. Oh, dope. Um, Bedford flooring. And... <laughs> um, <laughs> And the same with when I set up Urban Spirit, it's like you have to just pretend that you're yeah. a real business. At yeah, yeah, yeah. And because you are a real business. Yeah, but, like, at the, but at the same time, you're not because no one knows who you are. No one knows who you are, yeah. No credibility or trust from the public. So it's like you just have to pretend like you're real until you actually start getting people interacting with you or you start getting clients and business. And yeah. You're real. You've done it. Like, uh, shout out, shout out to, shout out to the carpet business, by the way. If you want carpet fitting, you yeah, know. Nottingham, Newark, Ekring, Bestwood, Hucknall areas, Nottinghamshire surrounding, Bedford flooring, carpets and vinyl. <laughs> Hit up Lamb. Her boyfriend will suit you, will, will patch you up with some nice <laughs> carpet. <laughs> she will. All right. What was it? Seeking support and mentorship. All right. That's a hard one, you know. Um, yeah. throughout my life though I've had I've had people like that have come across when I was in again pr- secondary school a lot of things happened in secondary school um, there was this but just before that moment happened uh, a few months a few weeks before I finished year nine there was this teacher that came in and she was a singing teacher and it was a workshop and um, she was working with us and then at some point, no one else came. I was the only person that came up there. And we started working on singing together, yeah. right? And I was like, oh, this is really, really cool. I like this. It's really, really great. So, you know, the moment, the moment like school ended, I was like, hmm. And then I had that experience. I was like, oh, where? I'd wish. I hope she's coming back. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And then funny enough, I meet her on, I meet her on one road right and uh she's like oh i really want you to come back when are you coming back she said yeah she's gonna come she said that she's gonna come back and so like throughout year 10 and throughout year 11 she was helping me sing better and you know breathing exercises and singing exercises shout out miss mills by the way like i have no idea where she is now i've been trying to find her just so that i could say thank you because like she was a massive inspiration and like uh, encouragement to me like with singing and sort of going up going up on stage and doing it like for the mm-hmm. first time those were like the first few years I actually took singing seriously and she was there yeah. do you know what I mean so having, men- having mentors really helps it really really does because yeah yeah I never had a mental kind of figure in my life I've just kind of always done it solo like you know just yeah just in my room and stuff like that i've never had singing lessons i think i had a couple at school yeah um, in year nine as well but no i never really had any like formal singing training or any mentors or anything like that yeah um, yeah just always practice by myself right i guess that way it's like kind of hard again to like feel like you're making any progress because you can't kind of, nobody to tell you like yeah. hey work on this work on that yeah i hear that so yeah, I guess it, it would be really, it could have been useful to have someone, even now, actually, it could be useful to have some kind of mentor mm-hmm. person in your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be interesting. And when you get one, just never, never take them for granted. Mm-hmm. And fortunately, I didn't, fortunately, I didn't do that. Do you know what I mean? And do you know what? Another thing about mentors I really like, they can see through your BS. Yeah. They can see through, like, they can they can see when you've not practiced mm. or they can see through, like... Because yeah, they've probably been there themselves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So they'll, they will, they'll bop you over the head when you need it. Yeah. And they will tell you, they'll tell you, Wagwan. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely. Can't stress that enough. If you, if you can't find a mentor... Look, we have YouTube. Go online. I'm sure there's plenty of people sort of teaching stuff for free. So, yeah, that, you know, YouTube has been my mentor. Everything I know how to do, I've learned from YouTube. Mm. See what I mean? Okay, so adapting to change. 
Um, the idea that the path to pursuing dreams may involve unexpected twists and turns. Yes, 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 yes. I can't even say yes enough. Mm. It, bro, it's so true. It's so, so true. You think, it's because you think that, you think that the, the road to success is like a pleasant, straight road with no obstacles. Oh yeah, like you're going to complete your training for whatever you want to do. Yeah. You're going to find that job and you're going to move somewhere and it's all just going to yeah. follow each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, and you think that, you know, you're just going to run through this, the finish line and, like, the ribbon's going to, like, be yeah. there and you're going to run through it and it's going to be beautiful. And... Yeah, like how I said, like, when I was younger, I wanted to be a famous singer. Do you want to know something? Well, I auditioned for Britain's Got Talent with my friends. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah, when I was in, like, year six. So, obviously, I thought I was definitely going to get through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we sang um, Black Heart by Stushy. Do you know that song? I think I've heard of it. I've heard of it. Yeah. I've heard it, like, I think yeah, on the radio. Like yeah, I've heard that song a few times on the radio before. Mm. It's really cool. So, did you go through? No. No? <laughs> it's funny that, because I actually auditioned for Britain's Got Talent too. I, uh, it was when, I think, when I was at uni. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went through to this other place where they started filming you, and then I didn't. I never heard back from them again. No, I only literally did the first round of it. That's it. There's yeah. So many people there. Like oh, wow, yeah, the queue goes on forever. Yeah. And you think you're going to be, like, doing it in front of someone important, but it's just these... Just... Nobody. Un yeah, <laughs> unknown people, right? Yeah. What's it? Uh, you know, I guess, what, life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, I think for me it was mainly, it was when, it's when I had kids, mm -hmm. was when my brother passed away. Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that can really, can really hit you out of the blue. Do you know what I mean? And when my, when my brother passed away, I just, there was a period of time where I think for quite a few months, um, I just didn't want to do music anymore because it's sort of, and I thought I was done. Like I didn't want to do music. I didn't want to do like vlogging anymore right and I thought I was done I thought yeah that was it I just find something else I was doing writing at the time because I love I love to write and I love to read right but then like the end of the, the same year like sort of the year towards the end like sort of December November I was like the spark started picking up again and you know and then I realized like I think one of the legacies that my brother left for me was to have fun do you know what I mean? To like, not to take life so seriously, not to sort of get so get too stuck up all the time and sort of embrace, you know, the moment and have fun and like, you know, do what you really want to do and don't. And like, life is short. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just never know what could happen. So go for it and don't think. Don't overthink things. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think... And funny enough, it... I know this sounds weird, but... That experience sort of strengthened my passion to go further in life and be more fearless. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. That's all I can really say about that. Just as long as you get back to it. Do you get what I mean? You usually will. Like, if you're creative and you have some have something that you love doing. Like, you'll go through stages, I know I do, like, I'll go through stages where I don't sing, I don't... I, I used to love art as well, like, for my whole life I've always done art and drawing and stuff. But you like, like drawing too? Yeah, but, like, literally the past year I haven't done anything, yeah. like, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd go through stages where I don't do anything, and then one day I would just be like, I want to do something, and then I'll just, you know, paint something or draw something, literally, even just a little sketch of something. Um, that's funny you say that because I've been thinking about because I have a natural like ability to draw as well, mm -hmm. and I think I was thinking of getting like a sketchbook and every now and again, yeah, every now and again like sketching when I have time. Yeah, just even literally just little sketch because some like little sketches that I've done, I've thought you know I really like that and I've turned it into something bigger. Like this, I remember one time I was just sketching this little monster thing. I like to draw weird, creepy things. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just 
sketching this little monster guy and I said, like, you know, what? I, I like him. So I've drawn him loads and loads and loads of times. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like mediums, like he's got his own little personality now. He's got, I've drawn him a little dog, like he's, <laughs> he's got his own little life. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I like sketching things from my head as well, like dream, certain things that I dream. It's funny because like, there was a time I was dreaming about something. I was, I was in a dream and I looked in a what? Someone said that it's really bad to do that when you're dreaming or sort of like, to like look in the mirror when you're dreaming. I've never done that. I looked in the mirror and I, I saw I had, I had blue eyes and I had like hair like yours, but curly, like very like curly frizzy hair, it was weird. Okay. Would be, I, looked, I, I think I looked pretty cool. I was like, yo, I could rock this. <laughs> It was funny, man. It was it was hella it was hella funny. So I just wanna I wanna draw that at some point, like when I get time. An albino blessing self portrait. <laughs> yeah, I'll say it's. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna caption that, but yeah, we'll see where it goes. Okay. <laughs> you should though. That would look cool. I wanna see that. Yeah, definitely. How do you celebrate milestones? I guess just. When you, it's just doing something, let me start over. Like when you hit like a thousand subscribers and then you just like take a, take a minute to like stop and celebrate or? Yeah, just appreciate what you've done. Just think, I've, I've done a good job. Like, yeah, I sh I'm proud of myself. You know, it could just be that, it could be getting yourself, you know, your favorite little drink or something like, oh, you know, I deserve a little treat. Uh, I think when you achieve something small, like, you know, as, I think when I hit when I hit a thousand followers on Instagram, I'm definitely gonna celebrate that. I think that's a little mile. That's a mini milestone. Yeah. Because I've been fighting for a thousand followers for like a year now, Aww. and it's like I hate it when you. I hate it when you get some followers and then you get like let's say 830, and then all of a sudden you see 828. I hate that, man. Why are you unfollowing for, man? Why are you destroying my dreams, man? <laughs> I don't like you guys. <laughs> nah, but yeah, no nah, stuff like that. I think when I hit a million, that I'm gonna, I'm I'm celebrating that for real. I'm saying that. And that's a that's a big achievement, um, which of course you know you'll definitely celebrate them. But I think celebrating like the small achievements, yeah, can sort of encourage make, you. You know, the big achievements feel so far away. Like, yeah. Set you know setting little milestones. Be like, um, now I'm a bit closer. I'm a bit closer. But you know, this is still really good where I'm at now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've still done really well just to get here. So the fact that I'm here now and I can go even further, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, dope. All right, so for our last segment on Up and Up podcast, we are going to be reading a couple of stories. Um, I'm going to be reading from the Reddit thread, Get Motivated. And this user asked, does anyone have motivational stories about how their life changed after they were 25? So, you know, this person's basically saying they have newly graduated from college, they have no job, no partner, no idea what they want from their life. And, you know, all their peers are already getting engaged, having kids, houses, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they're feeling a bit lost and not really sure what to do with their life. So someone replied and they said, for context, I'm 45. Looking back, the ages of 25 to 30 were the hardest for all the reasons you mentioned. There is so much pressure from family, society and ourselves to have everything figured out and be well rooted in a career and relationship. The reality is that it takes some people longer than others to find themselves and then to find their stride. Fact. It took me three different college degrees and 15 years to figure out what I wanted to do. All the jobs I loved didn't pay enough to cover my bills and all the jobs that did cover my bills were really draining or even soul sucking. I felt hopelessly stuck. I lived paycheck to paycheck and was always stressed. I absolutely felt like a loser and was beyond frustrated with where I was in life. I started a blog and a YouTube channel when I was 38, not thinking or even hoping it would go anywhere. My content took off. I hit my stride at 40 and became financially free with the ability to comfortably retire at 42. The big wow. lesson I learned from this is, from this wild ride is to find something that you love and then find a way to connect your passion with the world. Take the pressure off yourself. Dedicate a year to figuring out what you like and dislike. Try new things. Fail at new things. Just decide ahead of time that no matter what happens in life, you will grow from it. Wow, that's actually quite inspiring. Yeah. That is very inspiring. I like that. It's really, really cool. 
Um, mine is mine's quite cheesy and typical, but it's uh, about someone that I know named um, Akiana Kramerak, right? I hope I hope I said your name right. Um, she, basically, a self-taught artist began channeling her spiritual insights into breathtaking paintings at just five years old. Her early masterpiece was uh, Prince of Peace. Gained she gained an international acclaim, uh, capturing her art into the world spotlight. Uh, Akiana continued to evolve her style, uh, blending realism with ethereal elements, and her pieces, displayed in prestigious gal galleries, now serve as a testament to the extraordinary journey of a once unnoticed talent. So she and she also grew up in like um she grew up in like the hood, and it's like her parents were really like dirt poor, and. You know, at just, I think, f around four years old, that's when she they noticed that her drawings were quite good. At, for, for, do you know when, do you know when, how children draw? They used to draw circles for heads and like, you know, yeah. she would draw like a proper, almost really good detailed drawing for her age, right? Yeah. And yeah, before you know it, she she got invited, you know, to like Oprah and, you know, started talking about her pieces and it was really, really cool. Check her out, Akiana Kramerak on Instagram and stuff. I'm sure we'll put like the link below the description, but um, she's quite inspiring. Um, and I think that's an encouragement to, you know, if you're naturally good at something when you're a kid and you really enjoy doing it, don't neglect it because everyone is a genius at something. And I think she found her genius and it was yeah. quite prominent at an early age, which is great. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. All right, well, thank you everyone for watching. That is the podcast, guys. And Lam, thank you so much again for joining us as well. Like, uh, shout out, I have to give her shout outs because she does a massive, massive help like with like the setup, the scripts. My goodness. Uh, yeah, guys, dare to dream. Be you. Uh, keep it up with the, you know, striving for success and stuff and being yourself and be authentic with it. And uh, yeah, peace. Bye.